What's happening? Uh, just watching um, this 2020 uh, uh, mission go on, this 2020 agenda. I, yeah? Yeah, like I, I know from, I guess because you're not able to see the news like you used to. No. But, um, but what I've been able to see researching and stuff, I've seen that uh, a lot of uh, people in the you know in the system and in, in uh, like the government or CEOs or stuff like that, a lot of them are resigning or yeah. you know people being exposed. A lot of people being exposed one by one, and I have. Uh, Apparently, very soon, a lot of people are going to be uh, either arrested or exposed. Mm -hmm. And that's thanks to uh, uh, Donald Trump. He he seems to have, like, a whole strategy. And he has the military, uh, I guess, backing him. He has military intelligence. Yeah. And it's interesting on the internet is um, there's a whole community of people who are researching this stuff, and there's a forum that um, some people in this community uh, go on, and there's a a group of people, a person who go under the name. People pronounce it Q A non Q A A non. They they spell it Q A N O N. And apparently these these there's a linkage to Trump. It could be him and his team. It's like a way for them to bypass the media and I guess get people on the side and they're revealing like information, but they do it in a way which isn't, um, I guess, violating uh, laws, and they, uh, it's like they've been, they able to when things they 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 give clues about things before they happen, and they happen, and people are like, wow. And to date, so far, this 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 person or people uh, have not been wrong. And um, I was looking at the name, Q ain't on, and it, if you say it out phonetically, it's the word canon. Yeah. It's in, you know, religion, canon is like, in the, almost like an authoritative uh, scripture that people follow, and that's kind of what this Q ain't on uh, avatar is to these people. They all seem to follow what this person or people say, and, you know, it has the word, Canada has the word C-A, which is shit, which is very important, and, and and the other part of the word, they have none. So I suspect it's something to do with the nuns. And yeah. So you have Anonymous, you have WikiLeaks, you have QAnon, you have these People who I see the linkage between all those three sources is none. Yeah. Who, so well, I guess K non, mm-hmm. uh, if if you pronounce it without the sound of U that usually follows a Q, mm-hmm. it's more like a K. Yes. K non, uh, a Q in the alphabet is an original person genetically engineered. If you look at the way a Q is made, capital Q, it's an O with a spoke stuck into it at the bottom, which represents the egg and the needle. Yeah. Like Quebec. Mm Mm-hmm. And I see they, they, you know, they refer to themselves as patriots, 
because uh, a lot of people are seeing this as like, oh, they, they're getting the, you know, they're, they're trying to, they're serving the American people, and they're trying to get rid of the, you know, the crooks and all the corruption, but um, I see, um, especially with, with tomorrow's football, uh, Super Bowl, I think that's like a metaphor, because it's the Rams, which are goats or greedy yeah. bureaucrats, and you have the Patriots, military, yeah. which it could Don't be. Don't forget the word super. Super. A super is someone who makes soup. Yeah. And a soup uh, is uh, made in a pot. And it is brewed, and who gets to brew but a witch? Mother Superior. Yeah. Oop. Lake Superior. In the Bible, it's a mess of potage is the soup. It's a fish soup. And a fish soup is when water flows on land, bringing the fish into places where they weren't before. And somebody is brewing the soup. Mm. She brews. He brews. Brews. That's something that I, I I was thinking actually thinking about the other day. I wanted to ask you about um this. What is that? What did you get that? Learn that ma and pa's kettle. That ma was, and pa kettle. Yeah. That was something we had when we were kids. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, because I, I never heard that when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was a kid a little bit before <laughs> you. <laughs> 78 now. 78. That's, that's, uh, that's penultimate before 80, 88. Yeah. Well, it's uh, approaching the uh, um, long-term life. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least in North America, I don't. I don't think the rest of the world uh, surpasses North America for uh, longevity. The uh, longevity usually occurs when one uh, does not get overwhelmed by the events. And most countries it's almost impossible not to be overwhelmed by the events. Uh, But that doesn't mean some countries are better at hiding the events than others. Yeah, so you're right. Like this events all over the world I'm seeing apparently and um you know with the I'm I, I was trying to figure out what is meant by these yellow jackets in in France. Like I know a yellow jacket is a sort of wasp predator. But yeah. I, I I'm trying yellow to figure... is the color of religion. Mm. You look at uh, the stuff coming out of the Vatican, the highest ranking are the Pope, and much of what he wears is 
yellow and white. Hmm. Whereas the second rank wears purple. And the third rank wears red. Or maroon. Maroon. Is that linked to that? I remember when I was on your farm, we, we were going over, it was the dance of something. And there was colors associated with it. Dance of, uh, <coughs> I forget. But the colors were significant. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, you know, I see all these this uh, activity around the world, and um, I see now, and like places like Australia, which apparently I think parts of Australia will be around after this cataclysmic change. But there, it seems like they have been trained in their way of thinking to be more uh, what they call liberal, kind of, clo- a kind of socialist type of uh, thinking. And it seems like, I guess maybe because of that, the cataclysm, after they destroy everything, because I, I, I was trying to figure out, okay, why is this communism thing... Uh, it's it seems to influence a lot of uh, people's thinking, and I guess after the cataclysmic event, when all, everything that's left, I guess the system figures they'll manage everything through like a form of communism. Uh, but I, I, that, I don't know. That, hmm? the suggestion is that after the cataclysmic events take place and the people in charge wipe out all the people who worked for them under the current system, then what will be left will be a space program in the north and a green Antarctica in the south with a um, central area where only meetings are allowed. The ones from the north can send diplomats to the middle The ones from the south can send diplomats to the middle and they can exchange and do whatever they want to do there, but nobody from the north can go to the south because they are going to be denied that right by the people in the south. When you talk about the south, of course, you're talking about Antarctica, And the biggest places nearby are Argentina, not uh, Argentina and South America, and uh, New Zealand and Australia on the other side. So, how much of that will be left when the people who are in charge? today destroy their own workers. Mm, Exactly. Australia is currently going through the opposite to our weather. We are, in fact, getting the coldest weather under this polar vortex they are getting the hottest. Yeah. You know, it only snowed like uh, like serious snow. Not even serious. The other day. But I'm hearing you guys 
We're under it. <laughs> the I've, been, the... I've been trying to shovel to uh, keep up with it, but I, I've only been able to manage keeping the driveway open for cars to come in uh, about 20 feet and uh, a pathway for me to walk out into the field and another one up to the house. That's the maximum I've been able to do in a day. And the snow uh, in the last week has been record snowfalls. January is an all-time record month for snow in this area. How many? How, how, how much uh, came down? Uh, I don't know what the figures are because, as you said, I can't I can't follow the news no, yeah. <laughs> too much. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, uh, waist high uh, in a lot of places, uh, and that because uh, we've had uh, like three, four really cold days, then three or four days of snow, then it warms up to zero for a day and everything drops by about six or eight inches. Then it snows again because there's ice underneath and the snow can't melt lower than the ice. And it just keeps adding six inches at a time and um, of course I I have a a scraper type shovel um, but uh, under these conditions you can't lift a shovel full yeah yeah, I know what you mean that is a lot we haven't had snow like that here yeah waist high it's been a while yeah yeah, I think the highest going is... out there again today. So. <laughs> and you, how are your roads? Are they? Um... Well, roads are not bad. It, you know, they usually delayed by twenty four hours before they get back to normal. But you know, they've got a lot of equipment here in Canada uh-huh. for snow removal. Do you get a lot of potholes on your roads? Uh, from the shovels, from the plows and stuff? Well, not at this stage because it's it's still frozen. Mm. But uh, it all depends on the material they use to make the roads yeah. and, um, and, and the people who make the roads want to have jobs that are <laughs> long-lasting. So potholes are usually a product of bad road making. Yeah. You should see New York when potholes you, everywhere. You can prevent it if you want to. Yeah. But the ones who want to make money all winter don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the same. Yeah. So... So I guess what what would you suggest uh, seeing all this, these people like government, like um, like high figures, you know, high uh, high level people in government, they're being uh, exposed as. uh, I guess I just look. uh, It's part of the getting rid of the people who work for you. Yeah. So, and and the amount of snow, of course, is when the flood from the Lou at the Sioux happens, there ain't no place for water to go because the water is already there on land with the snow. So, the the flood that comes will go further on land, much further than it would 
if if a lot of it was being absorbed along the way. Yeah. But you know, if you're you're talking about knocking over the bridge, which is now called the Northern Michigan Peninsula, mm-hmm. um, and the water comes flowing, well, it's going to go uh, and and flush New York. Yeah, that's... got no place else to go. You know, it can't go into the St. Lawrence Seaway more than what the Seaway can hold, and that's only 35 feet deep and a mile across. So if if you got 300 feet coming at one mile across, 300 miles coming at one mile across, 299 miles of water got no place to go except on land which is already soaked yeah i mean i i just heard uh i think yesterday the day before there was a a 6.6 earthquake in mexico I guess just south of uh, uh, the border. Yeah. And I'm not sure what it means this day, but it could be linked. Uh, uh, Mexico is the center of destruction for a lot of the history of the planet. Interesting. I never knew about that. Well, that's where the dinosaurs died. Uh, the Yucatan Peninsula got hit by a rock from the sky, and and the asteroid caused such a commotion that the dinosaurs that had lived for millions of years up to then all could not breathe properly. So, and you look at, you know, the disappearing uh, peoples of of that area, you know, Maya and Incas, and it seems like a place you go to disappear. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, um... and they're all piling up at the border. With Trump and the military making yeah. sure they don't cross over. So it's a headline when somebody makes it across. It used to be normal when a thousand people got across every day, type of thing. I saw um, a news thing um, with like Nancy Pelosi that was saying, like, because, you know, she made a big thing on the news saying, oh, the, this wall is, is immoral. And and then it it comes out now that Nancy Pelosi is, uh, she has uh, links to Mexican mafia uh, cartel or drug or whatever. Yeah. I would not be surprised if Nancy Pelosi is not, among the leadership of the uh, criminal activity and destruction planning for the U.S. So you, so you think it's the, the bureaucrats who are involved with the yeah, destruction? Yeah, they have always been. You know, it's the bureaucrats that mm-hmm. had the French Revolution. Yeah and chopped off the heads of the leadership so that they could make a phony leadership where they, in fact, were controlling from a hidden place. Bureaucrats kind of 
never want to be up front in ever in anything. So they hire politicians. And the politicians take the credit and the blame, but the bureaucrats who never run in elections are the ones who really run the show. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're in positions where (laughs) they have, like, lifelong careers. Like, they can't get fired, like, you know, being a civil servant. Yeah. You just just conserve the rest of your life. You cannot win an election in the U.S. without somebody having been behind the scenes deciding who's going to win and who's not going to win. It's only 5% of the electorate that decides who's going to win because 45% of the people who vote vote for the Democrats and 45% vote for Republicans. Then you have 5% who don't vote and 5% who vote what they are told to vote. So that 5%, all it has to do is change sides, and they win the election. So when somebody gets on their tail, they want to throw them out, they just switch over. But in this period in time, the people who are getting thrown out are the people that used to run the show. Yeah. Now they're being decapitated, uh, not literally, but from their position. Whereas the uh, the French Revolution was chopped their head off, here it's pulled the rug out from under their feet. Now, when when the military, the last time the military got rid of bureaucrats, is that true that it was in Egypt? Well, that's where it started. Okay. Egypt is is a country that you look at, uh, the code word PT Mm -hmm. is the same code used by Bell Canada and Ontario Hydro. Uh, Peter, the the religious gang, mm-hmm. and what what do you get when you get gypped? Uh, you get screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Egypt. Uh. <laughs> Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Ptolemaic dynasty that ran Egypt in what uh, years just before AD came on board. Somewhere down there up until about three, four hundred years, I think it was. Been a while since I looked at that stuff. But it doesn't surprise me that uh, Egypt uh, is is the place they built pyramids and Mexico is a place they built pyramids. It's the underground. Until people conclude that not below ground, but under mm. ground, you know, is uh, is a pathway called the Moho discontinuity, 
and and they went down there starting prior to the ice age 24,000 years BC and and expanded the uh, highways all over the world with uh, popping up hills where they wanted things to be built. That's why you have Capitol Hill and Parliament Hill and Hillary Clinton. Where the hills are is where the controllers make their appearance. And the other place is out of the water because many of the hills on Earth are underwater. And if you're going to build a vehicle that can travel where you want it, but you live underground, the only thing that makes sense to me is a saucer-shaped vehicle because it has to come out of a former volcano shaft and survive in water like a submarine and then fly in the air uh, based upon the movement of uh, wind and the air behind it or below it and can go up and down just like the planes the Air Force has built recently where they just lift like a helicopter and then fly. So anything to do with flying saucers has nothing to do with outer space. It all has to do with the movement of people who control the moho discontinuity. And they want to be the brain. That's all they care about. They want to be the controllers uh, in the same way that on Earth, uh, the UN is run by bureaucrats. Number two is number one. Because number one is in hiding as an ant goes into hiding and sends its troops out to gather up the goodies and take them below ground to the queen. And these people, uh, I guess the drugs, they have like different Groups, it seems like, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Two different groups. Now they have competing groups. Yeah. Make it look like it's people on the surface who are in charge and competing, like the U.S. and Russia and China and Germany. But they are there only to create an illusion that the people of the earth know what's happening and they've been told everything and that's a lie. They are only there as cosmetic leaders, whether they be political or religious or military. But When the time comes, there is a ranking uh, that takes place. And 
people at the bottom of the ranking start disappearing. And it works its way up the ladder to where we are now is a lot of people at the top are disappearing. Eventually, there is no need for anybody born in the period between 8,000 B.C. and 2,000 A.D. No place for them in the future. Only the gang that will come out of the underground to take over command of a space program and Antarctica will be their home. That's why if you hear news on the radio or you see it on your phone, almost every day there's now a story on Antarctica. Yeah, I was just looking at the story. Yeah. Dana sent me. Antarctica. Find, finding, you know, lakes under ice and mm-hmm. yeah, all kinds of Fossils. stories about caverns and exploring caves and exploring uh, submarines that go under ice. You know. mm-hmm. What they don't realize yet is that there is a secret residency on Antarctica which is different than their own. And they can't be seen because they haven't earned the right to be seen. Oh. Who owns who earns that right? The people who are no longer living. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh. There was a uh, civilization prior to the Big Bang and there will be a civilization after the Big Bang bust or bang whatever you want to call it and those continuing um, civilizations are considered to be dead but there is one that never dies because it is the non-living made out mostly of water and electricity, leaving aside the DNA function of the living. They are invisible, however, as present as a space between words in a book. And the book cannot be read without its spaces. (laughs) Not living. They call Mm -hmm. call the beginning of this creation a big bang, but it's more a big bag. Drop the end and you got a bag. I remember when uh, uh, the papa's got a brand new bag. Yeah. Yeah. New life. Hey, Glenn, what do you... um, Are you familiar with any of that sleep paralysis? What's that word? 
sleep paralysis. Doesn't ring a bell for me. When, like, people, you know, when you're sleeping, your body kind of, you know, you lose control of your muscle functions, right? Because you're sleeping, but then you're, it's almost like a like in between dream state where your eyes open and then people feel like they're living in a dream, like they're they're wide awake, but their dreaming is still going on, right? Yeah, you're a bit. You're basically laying there awake, but you can't move. But things are going on around you, like you're. Yeah. In your, okay. You ever heard of that? Well, I I know <laughs> the concept, but I hadn't heard the word. Yeah. So you know, back in like some mythology, they had like that banshee that would sit on people's chest. Yeah. And, like, screaming it in their face. Right. That's sleep paralysis. Okay. Well, I I accept the fact that it certainly is possible. Yeah. Well, I had an experience with with it. I think it might be that um, over the summer. um, It was probably about like the sun was just rising. And then I just remember like I woke up, but I couldn't move because I felt like this kind of force was just pushing me into my bed and yeah. it was just like this kind of purple ball of like purplish ball of kind of misty looking energy or something that every time I would try to sit up it would just slam me back into my bed is what I was feeling but I could look around my yeah. room and I could see all the details of my room as if you know I'm awake and someone said that that might have been me experiencing sleep paralysis. It actually happened twice in like probably it, within it seems, weeks or it seems that those types of activities occur when you're hot. You're asleep but you're very warm uh, more than when you're cold. Your, uh, your body seems to see through things that it can't see in the cold when when you're very hot. So uh, I would imagine that Australia was going through the hottest period ever, from what I understand, um, would have a lot of that. But it's because you're coming close to the invisible people who are not living and what they are doing you you get to see a little bit of it without being able to participate although it's going on all the time seems that when you're living in a cold place it doesn't happen very often it's uh you know danny everybody walks into a room and if they don't see any furniture in the room they say it's empty well it's not empty and the proof that it's not empty is you turn on a radio and it plays. Some, something brought the sound there. I'm getting a call from Jennifer. I won't answer right away. You got to go? Not yet. Five minutes. All right. um, okay. Same thing with TV. Infrared, ultraviolet, the whole spectrum of uh, waves um, are non-existent as far as people are concerned. But if you're tuned in, you can see them. You can see the waves of radio and television. And and to be tuned in, you've got to have the proper tuner. And some people have the tuner. And some people don't. So 
it, it can be that there has to be a coming together of the temperature that you're at and the turning on of the tuner in your body for an experience like you described to occur. You're only starting to see what's already there. Hmm. Spaces between words. Remember that. When I was 16 years old, I was graduating from Ottawa Technical High School with a specialty in printing, specifically typesetting. And one of the most amazing things to me was that most people who weren't working in typesetting could not understand the concept of something being there, although you can't see it. But we knew in typesetting that every time you put together letters and you wanted to go to another word, you had to put something there. The only difference is you made it a little shorter than the other letters that you were assembling out of type to make words so that when the time to print came around, that thing you put there in between the words couldn't get ink on it and only the words printed. Well, life is the same thing. Life is exactly the same thing. Look around. You don't see radio waves. You don't see television. You don't see infrared, ultraviolet, whatever. But they're there. Sitting on your bed can be somebody who is trying to make a point passing you a message, turning on some switches in your brain and body for you to act or react. I know the concept when you say the space between words. I remember listening to Alan Watts, the, the the Eastern philosopher, and he talked about uh, nothing. He talked about how the space between the planets is just as important as the planets themselves, because without that space, there would be no planets. Absolutely. The body is not us. The body is the universe. The bag, the Big Bang's bag, and everything that happens in the universe is linked to everything else. You can make experiments in, in physics with atoms and particles and muons and all kinds of things, and... You can match its twin as you go through the experiment happening a foot away, a mile away, a thousand miles away, or a million miles away. Because nothing that we do is not affecting the whole. Every single living thing affects the whole. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I learned, I was learning that from you, 
every choice you make, you got to think about, you know, how it affects the whole. And that's why, you know, people like, I guess, our controllers who, you know, who are unethical, I, I guess they don't think about that, how their actions are affecting absolutely everything. It's a you problem. see, it's the main choice is what I do is for the purpose of the living and the non-living. And if I choose instead to make choices that are only intended for me, then what I do is I pass on information to others who say, well, you can't be a politician without being a crook. So I'm going to be a crook, (laughs) you know, because they seem to have so much power. People want want to have the job so much that they quit jobs where they're making more money because they know that although they're making less money as a politician, they're going to be in a better position to be a crook and help themselves. Well, in the end, what they've done is created an entire world of crooked leadership. And that's useless to their bosses when their time comes. They are the ones to go. But where they go is places like Alzheimer's, heart failure, strokes, early departure to a place they don't want to go. If they knew where they were going, they wouldn't want to be there. But it is the end product of the decisions, the choices they made. Now we're getting an option saying, if you make the proper choice in doing this, you will help the non-living. And that will demonstrate that you are not so selfish as to only think about yourself and what you consider to be your family. Well, your family, is no, there is no such thing except the universe complete. And if what you're doing has uh, done wrong to the whole. You know, I I keep thinking of those, what is it, 26 men have as much money as all the rest of the world or something put together. Mm -hmm. When you've done that kind of stuff, you're going to end up in a uh, court that you can't buy. A court that makes decisions based upon what your decisions were when you confronted the need to make a decision. While while those people thought they were getting away with things, what happens to them is worse than anything they may have given away while they were here. All for instant gratification. Yeah. You got it. 
I got to call back my Jennifer. Okay, Glenn. Talk to you again. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Right. Bye.